This is an aircraft carrier, but carefully engineered assault ship built with multiple layers and levels. Each section has a designated purpose, jet hangars of elevators, landing decks, and even well bays for hovercraft used to transport M1 Abrams tanks and other military vehicles. But the real question is, why do we need a smaller mini aircraft carrier when the US already has massive floating air bases like this nuclear-powered Nimitz-class carrier? The answer is simple. Air power alone cannot capture and hold a country. You still need Marines and ground troops to secure territory and prevent any opposing army from reclaiming occupied land. With more details all in the video ahead. The ship generally has around 10 main decks, each serving distinct operational or living needs. First is the bridge. Just a reminder, this is not technically a deck. Below that comes the flight deck, also called the top deck. Beneath the flight deck is the hangar deck, where aircraft are stored. Moving forward is the vehicle deck, followed by the well deck, also known as the stern. Finally, there are the berthing and living quarters, often called the lower decks. At the peak rests the flight deck, an intense airfield at sea. Here, vertical takeoff jets like the F-35B Lightning prepare for action, nestled alongside a constant flow of helicopters. This deck is alive with precision as pilots launch sorties and recover aircraft amid the choreographed bustle of deck crews. Though aircraft operate here continuously, their homes are below, only touching down to refuel or await their next mission. Directly underneath sprawls the hangar deck, a cavernous garage protecting valuable aircraft from the elements. Helicopters fold their wide rotors like steel flowers closing at dusk, packed side by side with the stealthy jets. Two massive side elevators are the ship's vertical conveyors, ferrying these flying machines seamlessly between hangar and flight deck to sustain high-tempo operations. Deeper below, the vehicle deck bristles with readiness. 33 amphibious assault vehicles line up like soldiers waiting drill commands alongside M1 Abrams tanks, trucks, artillery pieces, and supply vehicles. Ramps and elevators weave through the space designed for rapid movement. The moment the order drops, engines roar and vehicles roll forward to the launch point. At the stern, the well deck serves as the watery gateway. This cavernous, flittable bay swells as seawater floods in. Three sleek hovercraft, known as LCACS, float effortlessly, ready to dash through surf and sand, ferrying tanks, troops, and gear where boats dare not tread. Traditional landing craft share the well, offering versatility in assaults. This open gateway to the beach is where sea-based operations spring to life. Beneath the action decks lie the living quarters, the ship's heart for those called to serve. Nearly 1,900 Marines rest, fueled by air-conditioned comfort, stacked bunks, and separate spaces honoring rank and roll. Beyond sleep, the quarters breathe life with mess halls, gyms for physical fitness, medical bays in case you fall sick, and recreational areas, nurturing morale and readiness through long deployments. The USS Wasp's genius lies in how these decks flow together, planes ascend and descend with speed, vehicles shift effortlessly from storage to launch, and marine forces move seamlessly from sleek to battle. The highest level of the ship is the bridge, which usually has two main levels. The main level handles navigation and ship control, while the upper level, called the bridge wings, helps with better visibility and maneuvering during docking. These two levels let officers effectively command the large vessel. During underway replenishment, seven to 10 key officers and crew members are on the bridge to maintain control. This team includes the captain, executive officer, officer of the deck, conning officer, helmsman, lee helmsman, and quartermaster of the watch. The captain supervises navigation by plotting courses, calculating distances, angles, and speeds, and adjusting for wind, currents, and tides, using applied understanding principles of geometry, trigonometry, and physics to calculate courses, speed, and distance safely. If learning basic maths, calculus, algebra seems dull to you, then platforms like Brilliant offer fun, interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming CS, and more to make learning exciting every day. By taking this math course, you won't just learn to think like a captain who commands a $2 billion ship. For us, these newly updated math courses are designed to build your mathematical intuition while making you a better thinker and problem solver. You'll start at the perfect level and work your way up through interactive challenges that bring abstract concepts to life. Courses focus on the most useful, applicable math concepts, so you never feel like you're wasting your time. You can start learning for free at brilliant.org slash AI by scanning the QR code on screen or by clicking the link in the description.
Brilliant has also given our viewers 20% off an annual premium subscription, which provides unlimited daily access to everything on Brilliant. But what power is this mini aircraft carrier? These class of amphibious assault ships is primarily powered by a complex steam propulsion system, with the latest vessels transitioning to gas turbines and hybrid electric drives. The LM2500 engine compresses air, mixes it with fuel, and ignites it in a combustion chamber. The resulting hot gas expands through turbine stages, spinning the shaft at about 3,600 RPM. This power is sent to a reduction gearbox that lowers the speed to turn the ship's propellers efficiently. The gear-reduced shaft directly drives the propellers, pushing the warship forward. Multiple LM2500 turbines can work together or with electric motors for hybrid propulsion. But why do military need an amphibious warship when we have a 4 billion aircraft carrier? Its air power is unmatched, rivaling that of a small country and able to shift the battlefield from hundreds of miles away. Yet despite this immense power, aircraft alone cannot occupy or control land. They can destroy enemy forces and infrastructure, but cannot march into cities, secure streets, or protect civilians. Winning a conflict requires soldiers on the ground to hold territory and stabilize the area. This is the critical role of the amphibious warship. It carries marines, tanks, and armored vehicles close to hostile shores and deploys them quickly using hovercraft. These hovercraft traverse water, beaches, and difficult terrain, delivering troops where traditional landing craft or aircraft can't go. Marines then secure beachheads and push inland to clear urban areas and complex battlefields, missions impossible without boots on the ground. The strength of amphibious forces lies in their seamless integration of ground troops, tanks, helicopters, and F-35 fighters, working together to suppress enemy resistance and maintain momentum. Hovercraft add tactical flexibility by bypassing coastal barriers and carrying heavy vehicles air transport can't handle, allowing forces to strike where the enemy least expects. Once ashore, amphibious forces conduct sustained operations backed by naval gunfire and air support, stabilizing captured areas and protecting civilians. Their operations follow a disciplined rhythm, planning, embarkation, rehearsal, movement, and swift action, transforming sea power into lasting ground control. While aircraft carriers dominate the skies, amphibious warships bridge the gap from sea to land, turning devastating airstrikes into actual control and enduring influence. Only with this combined capability can true victory and peace be achieved. But the brute force multiplier of these hovercraft, let's take a look at how they change the tide of the battlefield. U.S. Navy hovercraft, specifically the landing craft air cushion, and its upgraded counterpart, the ship-to-shore connector, revolutionize amphibious warfare with their speed and versatility. These hovercraft can travel at speeds over 40 knots, about 46 miles per hour, far quicker than traditional landing craft, drastically reducing transit time from warship to shore. Their unique air cushion design allows them to glide seamlessly over water, beaches, marshes, ice, and difficult terrain, places where conventional boats cannot operate. This ability opens access to roughly 70 to 80% of the world's shorelines, vastly expanding potential landing zones beyond the limited 17% reachable by older landing craft. Hovercraft can carry a 60 to 75 ton payload, enough for one M1 Abrams tank or multiple armored vehicles and several dozen troops, making them invaluable for rapid deployment of heavy forces ashore. Their capability to bypass natural obstacles like reefs, mines, and mudflats ensures that forces land where enemy defenses are weakest or least expected, enhancing tactical surprise. Thanks to this speed and terrain flexibility, Hovercraft enable amphibious forces to launch fast, over-the-horizon assaults, sometimes deploying from 20 to 50 miles or more offshore, significantly increasing ship survivability by operating beyond enemy missile ranges. Operations using hovercraft change the battlefield by allowing swift buildup and sustainment of combat power ashore, combined with naval gunfire and air support, maintaining momentum and overwhelming the enemy before defenses can react. In the age of drone warfare, a giant ship like the Wasp class, a floating airport, faces new vulnerabilities. Even a simple $20,000 Iranian drone has the potential to wreak havoc on its platform. To resist such threats, these ships are armed with multiple defensive layers designed to counter attacks from every angle. At the bow and stern, the RIM-116 rolling airframe missile launchers rise above the starboard side superstructure offering clear lines of sight and rapid interception capability against incoming missiles. 
Midway along the ship, on both port and starboard sides, the RIM-7 Sea Sparrow missile launchers work in tandem with their fire control radars to provide broad coverage against aircraft and missile threats. Failing systems protects the superstructure and are found forward and aft of the ship. Some WASP-class ships feature a third amidships, ensuring that defensive fire overlaps and every sector remains covered. Mark 38 machine guns sit at the edges and corners of the hull, their elevated open deck mounts giving them a wide field of fire to engage fast boats or drones approaching from any direction. Closest to the weather deck, 50 caliber M2 Browning machine guns are distributed at the bow and amidships on both sides. These are placed so operators can quickly respond to low, close-in threats approaching the waterline, filling the final gap in the ship's comprehensive defensive envelope. If the preceding method proves ineffective against small targets, another close-in weapon system, the CRAM, comes into play. The CRAM integrates the radar and electro-optical system of the fallings, but this bad boy alone packs an 11-cell RAM launcher that can be reloaded, thus creating an autonomous system that can engage threats without relying on external information. Within the CRAM is the RIM-116 rolling airframe missile equipped with an infrared homing device. This small, lightweight infrared homing surface-to-air missile is specifically designed for engaging subsonic missile, such as the Soviet-era P-15 re-engineered by Iran. We make original 4K 3D animation with a small team of animators, so please support us by subscribing and dropping in a comment for more exclusive engineering animations made just for you guys.